Good afternoon, financial professionals. Abby Fletcher here of E4 Insurance Services, welcoming you to The Brew, building relationships every week. Thanks for tuning in today. For those of you joining for the first time, welcome and happy Long-Term Care Awareness Month. Also, we have a very special holiday tomorrow, uh, and that is Veterans Day. From all of us here at E4 Insurance Services, thank you for your service, veterans. We respect and honor all of the military's heroes and sheroes. Today on The Brew, we have E4's very own Shane Fickling, who serves as Regional Vice President. Shane brings over two decades of financial services experience and holds multiple designations, including the CLU, the CHFC, and the LUTCF. While well-versed in the industry, Shane especially enjoys long-term care planning, believing it to be a largely underserved need and one that can be more financially devastating to a family or business. Today, Shane will share a very real strategy to make taxable assets earmarked for long-term care needs into a tax-free asset. Feel free to use the chat box down below while Shane is live. I'll be keeping a lookout for your questions. Also, all attendees are in a drawing for a prize and we'll be announcing the winner shortly. Thank you for tuning in. And without further ado, welcome, Shane. The mic is yours. Thank you, Abby. And uh, thanks for all the financial insurance professionals for taking time out of your busy lives to, uh, to be part of the call today. Uh, I also want to echo Abby's thoughts and thanking uh, all the veterans out there, both on the call and um, uh, those that have served us. Um, couldn't have done it without you. So a um, little scary that I've uh, I've actually been in the business for 20 years to, to hear you say that. Um, it seems like just yesterday that I came into the business and um, here we are all these years later. So um, just uh, want to want to switch gears here a little bit. Um, Shane Van Patten got everything kicked off uh, last week um, with, uh, with the Long-Term Care Awareness Month, um, talking about some different planning options. I want to dig into that a little bit deeper today and go into some specific uh, strategies that we've been noticing uh, with some of our advisors that uh, that's been working well. Uh, the topic today is turning uh, taxable assets into tax-free LTC funding sources, as uh, Abby mentioned. Um, so I'm going to provide a little bit of uh, background about the Pension Protection Act uh, that kind of got the ball rolling back in 2010. Um, I'm going to share a little bit on the PPA's effect on annuities. Uh, I'm going to go through some uh, identification of opportunities that maybe you should be looking out for as advisors. Um, go through a little bit of a case review, um, summarize uh, some of the advantages that annuities have over other uh, LTC funding sources. Uh, so the Pension Protection Act, along with the Deficit Reduction Act, was first launched in 2006. Um, the PPA was signed into law August 17th of 2006, and both uh, both acts had uh, the, the design to reduce dependency on Medicaid, uh, encourage clients to take care of themselves as opposed to having the government take care of them. Uh, for years now, we've been encouraging our advisors and uh, our advisors encouraging their clients uh, to be proactive with some of their planning. Uh, if if uh, the, the clients have significant means and can can do things to, um, you know, to leverage up their assets and protect them. Uh, it's always a better strategy to do that than to, to rely on the government and uh, to have to spend down some of those assets when it comes to uh, a care scenario. Uh, Section 844 of the Act specifically allowed for certain annuities to be treated as uh, tax qualified long-term care insurance. Um, Section 70, um, uh, 200, one uh, B is the, uh, the specific um, uh, provision uh, that allows for that. Um, annuities with, uh, with after-tax premium sources are what we're gonna be focusing on primarily here today, uh, either cash uh, coming to the table uh, or um, existing non-qualified annuities, um, particularly those that have a large amount of gain are, are good targets for what we're talking about. 
Um, IRAs, other qualified sources are, are not eligible uh, for what we're, we're uh, speaking about here in particular. Um, the, um, uh, the HIPAA Act of 1996 was um, uh, one of the, the, the primary uh, drivers behind this. And in that law, there was some standards set for LTC insurance benefits to be considered uh, income tax free. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is to talk through an example uh, about how the PPA had an effect on annuities, uh, both before uh, January 1st, 2010, and then uh, how it changed afterwards. Uh, so prior to 2010, uh, the example on the top here shows a, uh, an annuity that was funded with $50,000 uh, cost basis uh, for the client's funds. Uh, there was $100,000 in gain, uh, which brought the total value to $150,000. Assuming that client then goes on claim and they need to, to use money from that annuity to pay for their, their care, uh, as most of you know, annuities are treated on a LIFO basis, which is last in, first out. Uh, so all the gain had to come out first, which is uh, 100000 of, of taxable income to the client uh, before they can get it their tax-free basis. Uh, so what changed uh, in 2010 is the ability to 1035 uh, as a, um, a tax-free transfer that existing annuity over to one that's HIPAA qualified and PPL, PPA eligible. And in doing that, uh, that, that simple signing of the, uh, the paperwork to initiate the, the tax-free transfer, uh, that 100,000 of gain uh, was basically uh, allowed to be tax-free uh, with these new annuity products that are available, uh, making the entire 150,000 um, uh, available for those long-term care expenses on a tax-favored uh, basis. So pretty, pretty major uh, far sweeping uh, legislation, uh, once again, encouraging clients to take, um, uh, take action proactively and, and handling some of their, their care needs that they might have. Um, so I just wanna go through um, some specific opportunities uh, within uh, your, your book of business that may be good for, for attacking first and foremost. Um, we work a lot with a company called Global Atlantic. There's, there's several companies that are operating in this space. Uh, Global Atlantic is one that we've do, done our due diligence on. Uh, we found that they have a, a very good um, simplified issue product uh, that is, uh, is preferred in this kind of a planning environment. Uh, so I wanna go through um, the illustration and kind of give you an idea of how this works. Uh, I should first of all start by saying that the uh, the target for this kind of planning generally ends up being um, clients that are on the older end of the spectrum from 70 to 79. Uh, 79 is the max issue age. Uh, those that maybe should have done planning years ago and just haven't haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Uh, they have to be of moderate health to be able to qualify for the product. Um, but there's there's a lot of folks that have um, you know, had a, a hard time getting traditional long-term care insurance maybe a few years back uh, where, where they may be eligible for the product now. So it's definitely one to, to at least, um, you know, run up the flagpole and see if we can do something for them. Uh, but the example here is a 75-year-old um, putting in $150,000 for their care. Uh, you'll see on here that they qualified for the premier rating. Uh, so there's two different ways, three different ways actually, that this product operates from an underwriting standpoint. And I'll get into more of that detail here in a second, but uh, they're either gonna get declined, uh, they're gonna have a two times multiplier or the premier is the three times multiplier. So with the three times multiplier, they put in 150,000 and um, their benefits are tripled up to 450,000 for their care. Uh, so when we get into the ledger section of the illustration, uh, that kind of shows uh, the example here. Uh, so the 150 goes to 450,000. Um, it's payable over a 72 month period. So uh, $6,250 uh, would then be available uh, on a monthly basis for really any type of care that the client might need. 
uh, home ca health care, assisted living, uh, nursing home care, uh, all three facets uh, that the care uh, that the client might need for, for care. Um, so unlike your traditional long-term care insurance where it's a, a use it or lose it type approach, uh, there also is a death benefit uh, of the original deposit that would be available for the client's heirs if they end up not using this for their, their care at all. Uh, there isn't a lot of growth if there is you know one downside to a product like this it's a fixed annuity um, you're going to have a you know a pretty meager rate just because of where rates are at right now and um, it's it's not going to grow a whole lot it's mainly just covering the, the cost of insurance and expenses inside the product um, but being able to leverage up that uh, that deposit amount to two or three times the uh, the amount uh, for somebody that's in their 70s is where the, the true value comes in for, uh, you know, for the client. Um, so I also want to share just a couple of the, uh, the medical questions uh, for the, the scenario here. Um, so this first page is uh, the more extreme side of underwriting uh, clients that, you know, maybe are already in a facility um, those that are already struggling with uh, activities of daily living or some kind of a cognitive impairment, uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, um, these types of extreme um, scenarios medically that the client might have going on would make them ineligible for the care. If in any of these questions are answered, yes, they're, they're immediately ineligible. Um, if we go to the second page, um, this is where it's determined whether the client would have access to two times the deposit or three times. Uh, so they can have some yes answers here. And there will be a phone interview um, as a follow up to this. But, but what's nice about this is just in completing this questionnaire, um, signing the, uh, the HIPAA authorization at the back here and then submitting the case followed by the phone interview will determine eligibility. Uh, so you don't have to fill out a 30 page application only to find out that the client is is ineligible. Um, they can do the majority of that just through, um, you know, a couple of pages of, of question and answer here. Uh, so some advantages that uh, annuities have that um, you know that some of the other products don't have. Um, obviously, the you know the annuities that are maybe inside your book of business currently. We we talk a lot about um, you know trying to repurpose products that may have been purchased years ago that just aren't doing the the job that the client initially uh, wanted them to do. Maybe there's a, an annuity that has a an income rider that's not needed for income anymore. Um, uh, you know, things like that uh, are usually good targets for, uh, for doing some of this kind of planning. Um, but as with uh, traditional long-term care insurance or some of the life products that have long-term care riders, uh, peace of mind for the client is, is going to be a, a, a huge aspect of really doing any of this kind of proactive planning. Uh, peace of mind for the client as well as for their family, just knowing that, that they're going to be taken care of. I do believe that there's a, a unique opportunity, especially now, uh, with our advisors that are securities licensed, um, with the market running up as much as it has over the last several years, there's a lot of variable annuities out there that have considerable gains. Uh, there's still a, a lot of clients out there that haven't addressed the long-term care needs that they have. Uh, so repurposing some of those um, variable annuities that have those large gains uh, while wiping out those, uh, those gains for the client's care is, is huge. Uh, there's tax efficiency on multiple levels. I already talked about the tax-free benefit that the annuity brings to the table. Uh, but the other thing that needs to be considered is, you know, the client that, um, you know, hasn't been proactive in doing the planning, uh, when it comes right down to it and they're, they're finding themselves in, in a care situation, um, many times they're going to be forced to liquidate, um, you know, their qualified assets. That's outside their home, that's generally um, their, their largest asset. And that's usually the first source that a lot of folks are gonna go to. Unfortunately, when they do that, it's likely to cause them to, uh, to go into a, a higher tax bracket. Um, there's all kinds of uh, challenges that come from not having a dedicated bucket like this for their, their care. Um, as I mentioned earlier, 
uh, the, the long-term care annuities are a little bit easier to qualify for. Uh, it's a simplified issue product. Uh, so where uh, some of the older folks that maybe have, have had problems going through full underwriting and, and gaining insurability through uh, some of the other uh, products, uh, these annuities may be a better option for them. Uh, similar to, to the traditional products, um, these annuities are also available on a joint basis. So one pot of money can be available for uh, both a husband and wife, uh, which, which could make the, the scenario a little bit uh, nicer for them. Um, and as I mentioned, there, it's not a use it or lose it type approach. There would be some kind of a death benefit remaining uh, for heirs for any of the, the dollars that isn't used for, for the client's care. A lot of times we also talk about stacking coverage. Um, if a client has been proactive in taking out uh, traditional long-term care or they have a, a life product with a long-term care rider, uh, maybe it was done years and years ago and it hasn't kept pace with inflation. Uh, so stacking on another product like this can provide uh, more the level of uh, benefits that are needed for the, the client's care uh, in today's world. So that's all I've got. Um, Abby, I'm going to send it back to you for any questions that, uh, that the audience may have. Thanks, Shane. Very informative. Any questions from the audience? I didn't see any pop up. Oh, Patrick O'Malley, or pardon me, Sid, coming from Sid from the audience, pardon me, wondering if this is available in New York State. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. We would have to do some uh, some research and find out for you, Sid. And Sid, your dedicated E4 contact will be back to you with additional in intel on that. Um, also, Fick, I like that you made mention to the questionnaire and the, the questions that would make them not qualified and qualified for this type of plan. Something to note is we do have a long-term care specialist on our design team. Um, that is very versed in the underwriting at these specific long-term care carriers. So feel free to reach out to your contact here at E4 and we can get you connected. Any other additional questions from the audience? All right. Well, now's the time that we're all waiting for, Shane. Will you pick a number from one to 14? Uh, let's go with seven. Seven, seven, seven. Who's the winner? Who's the winner? Patrick O'Malley, congrats, sir. Be on the lookout for a coffee card and some continuing education coming your way from all of us at E4. And be sure to tune in next week, folks. We're going to have an action-packed 15 minutes for you on next week's brew. Thanks for tuning in, and happy Veterans Day. Thanks, Shane.